Welcome to Research Talk. I teach in doctoral program and also uh, work with doctoral students on their doctoral committees. One question that I often get is, can we use a theory in phenomenology? Or what is the role of a theory, a theoretical framework, or a conceptual framework in phenomenology? And I can understand this question comes in because if you look at Husserl phenomenology, the focus is directly capturing the experience of the people and remaining open and also bridling or bracketing all the prior experience. So oftentimes students wonder like if our purpose is to bracket, bridle our experience, then what is the role of a theory in phenomenology? So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about what is the role of a theory, a theoretical framework in phenomenology. So in phenomenology, one of the key aspect, one of the key feature that we as phenomenological researcher aspire to achieve is epoch or bracketing or bridling during the process when we are exploring a phenomena. So when it comes to deciding, can we use a theory? The question is again, can we maintain openness or again the idea of bracketing and bridling if we are using a theory? So I often respond to my students when they ask this question is, the answer is it depends. So convince me or tell me how you are going to maintain openness towards the phenomenon if you already have a theory that you are going to use. Or tell me how you are going to use bracketing and bridling when you are exploring the phenomenon and tell me how would you maintain these, these, these concepts, this way of being when you are using a theory, because there is a possibility that if you are using a theory, a theory will predispose you. It, you may have a preconceived notion based on the theory you are using. So in a way, it will be hard for you to bracket, to bridle when you are using a theory in phenomenology. So the answer is, it depends. As a student or as an independent researcher, you need to think about how, if I choose to use a theory, what is the role of a theory in phenomenology and how I'm going to bracket myself, bridle myself in this whole process of conducting my study and still use a theory. So that needs to be clearly uh, articulated in your, if you are doing a doctoral dissertation, so you need to really clearly articulate this in your methodology. And if you, if you can do that, then yes, you can use a theory. You can use uh, a conceptual framework, a theoretical framework. But if as a methodologist, if I, uh, if I find that you have not really ex explained it clearly, then I may say, no, this, is, this does not make sense here because the most important thing in phenomenology is how to maintain this openness, how to use bracketing, bridling throughout the process of conducting your study. So let's also think about from different perspectives, different phenomenological traditions also. So if you remember, Husserl phenomenology, or another word we use for Husserl inspired phenomenology is descriptive phenomenology. Now in descriptive phenomenology by Georgie, they, they focus more on the detailed description of the phenomenon. And their focus is primarily about how to get a, a very thorough, detailed description from the people about the phenomenon and then you you analyze those detailed description to come up with uh, your analysis, your findings. In terms of Husserl-inspired phenomenology, they do not 
they are not very open about using a theory. And the reason, again, is same. Husserlian-inspired phenomenologies are more about maintaining that, that uh, bracketing your, your prior experience. So they are pretty serious about it. And that is why they may have some questions about the role of a theory in Husserlian-inspired phenomenology. However, I would say that you can use it in Husserl-inspired descriptive phenomenology. So what you could do is you can decide to use a theory at a later phase of your analysis. You are collecting your data, you are analyzing the data. When it comes to interpreting the data or how to make sense of the data, at that time, you can decide to use a theory that can help you explain the findings. So that, I think, is feasible in Husserl. Now let's talk about Heideggerian approaches. Heideggerian approaches, the phenomenologies which are inspired by Heideggerian, and, and one which is highly used, Max Venon. Uh, von Menon's phenomenology, as you know, it's more interpretive, and we call it hermeneutic phenomenology as well. So in hermeneutic, hermeneutic phenomenology, the focus is on interpretation. So you are collecting this data, and then there is a continuous process of interpretation. So you are interpreting the data. Now, in the process of interpretation of the data, since we are engaged in interpretation, this is where a theory can be helpful in interpreting the data. So if you are using a Heideggerian approach to phenomenology, then using a theory is, seems pretty tie-in like fit in in this approach of phenomenology. So if you are using Max van Menon's approach, then yes, you can use a theory. However, as I have been emphasizing time and again, that you need to really have a clear uh, rationale of how and why you are using a theory. And in phenomenological research, you have to clearly state if you are using a theory or conceptual framework, how you are going to maintain openness towards the phenomenon, bracketing, bridling, whatever you choose to, 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 to use in your phenomenology. This has to be clearly articulated. Then you can use a theory in phenomenology. Based on what I have read up to now in phenomenology, like some really good phenomenologies, Using a theory is not highly encouraged, but I think the, I can see now that there is a sense of openness to use a theory. However, as I said previously, the emphasis is again to maintain, not compromise with bracketing, brightling, maintaining openness if you are using a theory. I hope this uh, Clarification helps you answer the question if we can use a theory, a theoretical framework in phenomenology. Yes, we can, and there has to be a clear rationale. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again.